Got a whole bunch of deliveries today. Got uh, 60 sheets of the two inch foam board for the floors. Um, and got a, a six mil vapor barrier. Uh, I think it's polyester reinforced as well. And then got the uh, first pile of uh, 2B stone dropped off three quarter 2B clean stone. So it's probably about uh, 20 or 22 tons. But yeah, I got everything cleared out of here. There's a whole bunch of wood over here, a whole bunch of stuff over there. I got my GoPro mounted up there for the time lapse. But yeah, it's gonna be the last time this place is, uh, has a stone floor because the stone's gonna go down, four inches of stone, then the vapor barrier, then two inches of foam board, and then uh, I'm gonna do the PEX piping and still have to install over half a mile of piping. Final footage of what it looks like before we start the next uh, round of improvements. Ended up getting the building backfilled. Um, had my concrete guy come out and he put down uh, four inches of 2B stone. Uh, we put down a six mil uh, vapor barrier. And then I had him put down uh, 60 sheets of foam board for the radiant heat install. So this thing's fully ready to go to install the radiant heat. Um, I planned on doing that, this uh, foam board install this weekend, but he said, you know, he might as well do it. He'd rather just do it himself. That way he can get everything perfectly level um, and ready to go for me for the uh, radiant heat install. So I got a GoPro mounted up there. I got a really cool time lapse of this entire thing. I'm just waiting on my uh, radiant heat install kit to arrive and then I can start doing that and we can get the concrete poured. Should hopefully get going pretty quick here with this uh, concrete um, but yeah, the building looks fantastic. It really, now that this is, uh, has a nice pretty flat floor, you know, you can really get a sense of scale. So the top of the concrete's gonna be right about here, a couple inches um, below the top of the skirt. 
But uh, yeah, this is all XPS foam board, so you can walk on this without any too much, without too much degradation. Got some rain and got a whole bunch of water in here, so I might need to come in here and squeegee some of that out of the way. But yeah, you did a good job. So I can get this uh, radiant heat installed, and then after it's installed, I can go through and. You know, there's a couple spots here that I gotta fix with some of the tape and whatnot. But uh, yeah, try not to walk on it too much until I can get the uh, radiant heat installed. So next thing you'll see is probably that. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to to getting this thing going. It's about time to uh, get some concrete in here. I'm doing some prep work for the uh, radiant heat install. So I built a, uh, a PEX uncoiler. Because if you don't build one of these, it's basically gonna kink like crazy. So this way I can basically just pull it out the same way that they wound it. So I got a uh, some plywood and under here, you see that little dolly? I got a little, it's a little plant caddy. And basically I cut a little uh, piece out there with a hole in it and I screwed the pipe to it. And then I screwed that wood to this. And then I just screwed a, or drilled a three inch circle in the center of that caddy and you can see I got this piece of plywood on it that also has a three inch circle and then I got this here which is going to act as a buffer I need to put some wood in between it to act as a buffer and then now you can see the pex is going to sit on it and you can see it's got a really really nice roll to it and then I'm also going to put that piece uh, over top of it and then clamp it down and sandwich it so that way when you're pulling the hose, the friction caused between the tube and the uh, plywood will cause it to spin. And that way, you can see it starts right here, just grab it out and it just spins out and uncoils normally instead of having to like loop it over each other. So this should really make things easy. A friend recommended doing this or he said it's gonna be an absolute nightmare. I got some pieces and I screwed them to the bucket to keep the coil from bouncing around um, so hopefully that stops, uh, and, you know, stops it from pulling different ways, but it spins good.
Oh, I ended up getting the full install done. You can see you got the eight feeds, the one temp sensor that kind of just goes to nowhere. And you got the eight returns. And I uh, left a whole bunch of slack because I'm still waiting on my manifolds. So I'm gonna have plenty of room to hook everything up, but I think I got everything pretty dialed. I got everything as even as possible. There's no real gaps anywhere. Anywhere there are gaps, it's the mandatory, you know, 10 to 12 inch spacing between everything. For the long runs, it has to be uh, 10 inch spacing. And then between the loops, it can be, you know, 10 to 12. And then it a, has a balloon shape that's like one and a half foot because I'm doing 10 inch spacing. If you were to try and do a 90 with 10 inch space or a 180 with 10 inch spacing, it would kink right there. And you don't want that to happen. But hi, I'm really happy with how this all came out. You can see we basically got all the feeds, all the eight feeds, and then they split off into different branches. So we got all the feeds on this side. You can see we got everything, got our nice light bulb shape looking things. I'm very happy with how this came out. The drawing definitely made things easier, but I spent probably five or six hours on the first loop getting the fit perfect because everything else is built off this outer loop that kind of just runs all the way around the perimeter. So I got that absolutely spot on and everything came out perfect. And I was stayed within like an inch or two of the drawing for the entire project. So you can see, you got my 90s over here. Got all the 90s radius really well with no kinks. Really happy with the job I did on this. Here's a good corner where you can see all the 90s. got them as even as possible and then you can see basically this is the return so all the eights eventually return this way and then we do a slight little shift over and then they all start to come together into the uh elbows over there this one is a little bit different you can see i basically have to split the difference between these two so there's a tiny bit of a gap here but it's one spot and you got this tube here this tube here that tube up here so this will probably be the coolest area um so this is probably the best spot to put the temperature sensor if this is going to be the coolest area then since you got this little gap here so that'll make sure this always stays the temp and everything else should stay at least above that temp you know one or two degrees but uh yeah still picking up some trash and everything but at this point i gotta get the manifold mounted in between here i gotta get all these things hooked up just basic tools to do that and then it comes with the schrader valve already built in so i just need to pump it up to like 50 60 psi and uh let it leak test overnight and then keep it pressurized for when they do the pour so that way if anyone does nick anything you know this tube's pretty darn durable but if anyone does nick anything then i don't have to uh you know you'll see bubbles flowing out um, and you won't have to worry about concrete getting sucked back in so I'm gonna need to make sure to have that pressurized and have a decent air supply on it in case that does happen I don't think it's gonna but you never know Whew. that was a lot of work and I got the time lapse and everything so that's gonna be sweet to freaking watch Not bad for a rookie. Well, the manifold finally came in today after being lost for like three weeks and traveling the entire freaking country. It made it in one piece, undamaged. I just got done hooking up all the circuits. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then it's the opposite. So eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then it's a reverse spiral, the feeds all the way on the outside. And then eventually it comes back on the outside too and connects into there. So I got everything hooked up, everything very tight. And I just got my compressor and my uh, tire valve hooked up to the Schrader and I banged 50 PSI in the thing. So now I'm pretty much gonna let it sit for a couple days to make sure it doesn't fluctuate at all. Um, it's holding steady right now. I don't hear any leaks, I don't hear any hissing. So we should be good, but just gonna basically let it sit. Just I'm just gonna keep it pressurized until the concrete pour. Uh, it shouldn't leak down at all. Um, and if it does, I know I have a problem, but I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's a pretty pretty uh, professional job for uh, someone who's never done this before. So I got it mounted about chest level. Got all my lines ran, a little bit of slack on each of them for any expansion and contraction. 
and uh, we got this board banged in, got this all banged in, and I think we're good to go. Eventually, I'll probably take this off. You know, when I put walls in, I'll take this off. And you can see it has these little standoffs that I just mount it to a board. So eventually I can just mount those to the wall where I could put a board behind the wall and have it screwed to that. But that's a, a problem for when I do the walls. The height is not gonna change. Basically I would just unscrew that, put the walls on and then unscrew it right back on. So I don't have to disconnect any of this or mess with any of that. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna call that good. And uh, I'm gonna call this install complete. I just got in contact with the concrete guy, told him to get me on a schedule. And uh, I think I should be ready to rock and roll here very shortly. I have everything I need now to get the pour done.